But when did you start to have like a relationship that was the kind of relationship where you were actually like, you know, really having his back? Because at some point you're really like, you know, defending him and taking on all his beefs and shit, right? Yeah, 99. So we going to rewind in 99, you know? So in 99, 99 was like a, a, a drastic year for our community in our hood, because that's the year we lost um, Freaky Ty from the Lost Boys, rest in peace. He died in March. And then then Fifth got hit. I think he got hit like in May. Mm. You dig? So they killed Freaky Ty, and then they shot up Fifth. You dig? So that's when me and my homie Root Boy and shit, rest in peace, we, we, we ain't respect that. We, we looked at it like niggas taking our block like we saw, so we just started spinning on everything from there. So from 99, we just spin. Fifth ain't even have to tell us to spin. We was just spinning on everything. Rest in peace, root boy. So when 50 recuperated, and he told Yayo, because Yayo from the block too, shout out to Yayo. <clears throat> Yayo was always the rapper though. His rap name was Marvelous in the hood. He was, he was always a rapper too. You dig before 50, he was the rapper in the hood. Marvelous, shout out Tony Yayo. So long story short, um, 50 told Yayo, like, yo, tell Smurf I want to holler him. Because, you know, he, he, he hear about me letting that thing off in the hood. He was like, yo, tell Smurf I want to holler him and shit. You did? So, boom, I linked up with Fifth. And he let me know. He came to the hood first. Like, when he started to walk back, he sneaked through the hood, picked me up, and we went for a spin. So he was just telling me everything he want to do. And I'm like, man, shit, man, I'm busting my gun in the hood for free anyway, my nigga. Whatever, if we going to get rich behind this mm. shit, let's go. So he was like, yo, all right, I'm going to come back for you next week. We're going to go to the Poconos, and we're going to have this official meeting. And then me, Root Boy, and a few other niggas, we went out to the Poconos and, you know, sat down, formed a G unit. Ah. Everything was a goal for me. That happened in the Poconos when you guys went on yeah, vacation and came up with the idea of a G unit? No, he was recuperating because after he got hit up, right. his baby mother Shaniqua, she had a condo in the um in PA. Cause that's where the Poconos are in PA. So she took him out there to recuperate. You dig? So while he recuperating, we out there back and forth, making sure he good and whatever, whatever. Damn. So what was yeah. the what was the game plan from early on? Was it all about his music or was the plan to always like put together a, a, a crew and, and make it like that? <laughs> The plan was a crew because he 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 see he couldn't do it himself because he, he had the solo career with Columbia before he had got shot. But in this industry, you need a crew around you. You need some serious niggas around you. Because mm. remember, there's some serious niggas in this hip hop shit. And if you don't got the right people around you, <laughs> them niggas gonna be escorting you left and right. You right? <laughs> That's hip hop, bro. Like this hip hop is, is gangster shit. You did so. That's what it was. He, and at the end of the day, nobody knew us. We we young niggas at the time, and the guys we wore them with could be our pops. So we ain't really care what they did in the eighties. You heard like it's two thousand, nigga. We them niggas now. So we ain't really care about what they did. And that's why fifty. I say I give it a fifty. He's smart because he picked up all the younger niggas from the hood that wasn't around for that era. That's why he ain't really fuck with the older niggas from the hood. So when you're speaking you know, about they, the they, older they, niggas, are you talking about Supreme? Scared, they were scared. They were scared of the niggas Damn. we was warring. When you talking you about did? the older niggas, are you talking about Supreme and his crew? No, that's what we was warring. I'm just saying the older guys from my hood was kind of scared and intimidated of Supreme. And them. That's why 50 scooped up all the young boys. Because he knew we young, wild, and just don't give a fuck. We don't care who it is, man. And 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 we and we really looked up to uh fifth too because you know. He, he was a major figure in the community. So, just as a a street dude, he wasn't. This was like, or was his music starting to take shape already at that point? Nah, his music started to take off. When, when you mean when when we formed G Unit? Yeah, like was was there already reason nah, to believe his? Already. Oh, okay, it was already when he going got on. Shot up. Columbia dropped him. Oh right, and okay. He got shot in his mouth, so they dropped him. So they thought he was finished, and then remember, John them niggas popping at the time. Right, And that's who he was going against. So Columbia was like, man, this nigga shot up and he got this powerhouse he wore him with. Like, they got rid of him. And that was the best thing they could have did. So this but is... he had an album done already. Um, Power to Dollar. That nigga was by the pop. He had songs with Beyonce all. That's, no, it was Destiny Child at the time. He had songs with Destiny Child all. The... This is post that album, Hot Rod? That album is a classic to the day. That's the album with the Ghetto Quran on. No, nah, yeah, Power of the Dollar, because that got re-released after, and that was actually the first 50 project yeah, that, that I got into. Actually, album before G-Unit, 
before anything. That was his actual album right there. So this after How to Rob. Yeah, this after How to Rob. Mm. How to Rob was like a single, I think, right? Do you remember yeah, the that reaction? Was his first single. Do you remember yeah, the reaction the from How to Rob that y'all got? Like, how was that? Yo, Dropping bro, How to Rob. Yo, bro, it was crazy, bro. Like, it was crazy, bro. A lot of people ain't like that record back. <laughs> and 50 knew this. Like, and this is the thing. Like, he's always a strategic dude. The guy is smart. He did that just to get on in the game. Mm. You dig? Well, if you don't know me, you gonna know me now. And that's why he wanted all the big dogs in that. You dig? And all the big dogs fell for the bait because all of them responded, even Jay-Z. Mm. He, he and he responded at Summer Jam. I'm all about the dollar. The fuck is Fifty Cent? So when Fifth old that, that was the best thing Jay could have did for him. He's like, yeah, this nigga Jay just you dead, right? Like he yeah, just co-signed I mean, him. So all them guys fell for the bait. He loved when everybody responded. Wu Tang, all that respond. Shout out to um Raekwon. That's my dog. Yeah. Yo, we just hit four hundred thousand subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out. Click subscribe, get us to 500k. Yeah.